Hi friends, here we have a power supply. Uh, we will be rep repairing this power supply in this video. Before proceeding towards the video, you must have to subscribe my channel, press on bell icon, press on all so you will get notifications on each upload and like this video if you learn something from this video. This power supply, you know, this is for, for TP-Link or Tenda uh, routers. Uh, its power output is zero. Uh, here is the output nine volt. So it is giving zero volt now. It is damaged. Uh, here a uh, little detail they have given, uh, which is very difficult to read on camera. Uh, this was with one of my friend, and he requested that I have to open and uh, tear it down because he was about to discard this. So he said that I have to make a video, a shoot a video on this one. Uh, so hopefully what it happened with this one is uh, this had been uh, went defective uh, due to water damage because it was exposed to water rain water outside uh, so if you watched my video there is a procedure to open this get some quantity of uh, little quantity of gasoline or uh, uh, thinner you have to pour on this one on the joint and here you have to tap with a screwdriver little tap will be required so after tapping with a little screwdriver you can open it uh, you can see inside it is wet there is water inside as you can see water drops are coming out of uh, this unit water is inside this is not been, uh, the gasoline which we put but this is water this is rain water inside rain water entered and it had damaged this device or this equipment this power supply uh, sometimes such power supplies you will be able to repair and sometimes it is difficult uh, to be repaired here if we are looking at here it sparked little spark sign i can see so i have to clean it uh, with the cleaning you can see this uh, enamel the from this green enamel from the PCB is coming out mm, this this is very common with the uh, water damaged equipment uh, that the enamel is coming out so now what we have to do is we have to uh, check the fusing resistance which is in the input side in the 220 volt side they put some fuse some resistive fuse they put it over here we are going to check this one first uh, put the meter on the continuity range now we put the meter on the continuity and looking at the meter uh, while we are looking there is no continuity while we are clo closing the props together zero it is giving so this zero should come over here also but it is out of limits ol so that's why we conclude that the fuse has been blown and here another resistance is there which is a low ohm resistance of course Mm, we have to check it on the ohm meter ohm range so here you can see this is giving some 4.3 ohms reading 4.3 is a low resistance so 4.3 for this particular resistance is okay because what the color code is showing is nearly the same so it is the same it is good it is not bad but this fuse is blown because it is giving out of limits reading so now i'm going to remove this fuse from the pcb here if i will cut off this shrinking sleeve over the resistance or fuse they have provided this shrinking sleeve they are normally providing these shrinking sleeves to make a fuse in a shape that it should be like or it should not be uh, uh, making contact to the sideway components so this resistive type fuse resistance shape fuse it should be very low ohm resistance or zero ohm resistance nearly zero ohm resistance but it is not uh, what we can do is now i will remove it from the circuit uh, but for your experience what i am telling is uh, if a resistance is giving out of limits in circuit so it would be out of circuit out of circuit also it would be out of limits are very high uh, so i'm going to remove it uh, for the understanding of you people that uh, we will check it outside now we removed this fuse from the pcb this resistive fuse resistance shape fuse i removed it from the pcb now i'm testing on the meter uh, whether on the meter low resistance should come 
but as it is giving out of limits out of limits means very high resistance or infinity or open it is showing now you can see very carefully i'm focusing camera on this one uh, you can see a cracking mark a broken mark over here uh, as this i'm removing some enamel from it and wires are coming out so these wires they have been cut off uh, so this fuse is blown and the wires are exposed and they are broken so we will be repairing this fuse with the, for the fuse repair you have to have a fuse wire we will wrap the fuse wire on the term, uh, resistance wires uh, so it is better not to throw the whole unit away and uh, discard it but if we are able to repair it by a small piece of wire uh, it is a very gentle idea or a good idea so we did it now we've rewired it and we will be soldering it uh, for the soldering we have to make a perfect soldering uh, on each side on both the sides we have to make perfect soldering because perfect soldering is required your soldering should be good if your soldering is not good it could create a loose connection and you know loose, loose connections are bad in electrical because loose connections they are causing intermittent failure and intermittent failures are bad in electrical because the equipment sometimes it will work and sometimes it would not uh, so we are preventing uh, such loose connections and uh, we are making it perfect soldering perfect soldering is good your solder should be reflown or flow very well uh, on the wires and whatever uh, devices you are soldering on uh, your soldering should not be like uh, whatever dry joints uh, so this way we are putting this back because uh, we repaired it uh, now you can see with the help of the same soldering wire soldering iron i am soldering on both sides uh, both pads i am soldering this resistance or this fuse this is a resistance shape fuse that's why i'm telling resistance uh, now you can see we soldered it but still it is wet uh, it is not dried yet uh, we will dry it i will dry it uh, i will put this uh, board in between the lights some 100 watt or 200 watts light i will put it to make it dry now as it is dried we perfectly dried it uh, with the help of lamp uh, repair is perfect our repair is completed and now what we will do is i will have to uh, put this power supply in 220 volts line mains i put it in and now we are going to test the voltage on the power supply output so here on this plug we will be testing for dc voltages uh, red probe will be inside and the outside probe will be black so now, now you can see 9.31 volt 9.31 volt we are getting 91.3 volt means 9 volt so this 9, 9 volt perfect is coming on the output it means that the power supply has been repaired successfully uh, so this power supply now will be restored back because uh, here you can see this cover also we made it dry and our f and a little uh, dry we will more make uh, to make it dry perfectly uh, so it's easy to put it on there is a way they have made it some slots so that's why we can put the pcb in and the cable also we will carefully we will set it in this cover uh, so it's a little bit trick is required to fix it back perfectly uh, we will put some super glue and then uh, tape also on the joint and also we will wrap this on in plastic because if we will not make it perfectly uh, you know wrap or uh, sec we will not secure it perfectly so it could create a problem and water can enter once again and it will make it defective once again so that's not the desired thing what we will do is we will take care about this power supply uh, hopefully you people learned something from this video if you learned it uh, make like 
subscribe my channel press on bell icon so then you will get notifications on each upload and you will get notifications uh, thank you for watching thanks